Recently, a woman was arrested in Poland for making posters that show Mary and Jesus with rainbow halos, a reference to gay pride. This isn't just any painting of the Virgin Mary. This is the Black Madonna of Częstochowa, Poland's holiest religious site. The woman's crime? Offending religious feeling, now punishable offense in Poland, which is a deeply unnerving and creepy law. I've been living in Poland, an extremely Catholic country, for five years. And while I'm upset about the arrest, I'm not completely surprised about the anger around the Rainbow Mary, or in Polish as she's known, Matka Boska Czensowa. Poland's ruling party is far right to the extreme. They don't like immigrants, gays, or the European Union in general. But our president does like US President Donald Trump and being nice to white nationalists. This has got me thinking about art, censorship, and religion. I like to make memes, particularly classical art memes. My favorite place to post them is on 9gag, but recently I decided to give Imgur a shot. So I posted this meme, and faster than you can say, upload. Several people were complaining about why it's okay to criticize Christianity, but not Islam. And three comments in were arguing about Sharia law. So I made another meme, a painting of men praying in a mosque with a joke about drugs, and then called it a day. And I stopped posting on Imgur because I just can't deal with that line of thinking. Problem is, that line of thinking is really common and really frustrating. This anger stems from the idea that it's okay to make fun of Christianity, but Islam is utterly off limits. And if you do make a joke about Muslims, the angry Twitter PC police will come for you. Most discussions about this topic devolve into angry piles of whataboutism that go nowhere. What I find frustrating with this line of thinking is how contradictory it is. And disclosure, I'm an atheist who also practices some Wicca and pagan rituals. I've also been to Lutheran church services, taken part in Ramadan dinners, and visited Buddhist temples. Before I address the hypocrisy of mocking Christianity, but the blasphemy of mocking Islam, I'm going to look at another time an image of Mary upset people. The Holy Virgin Mary by British artist Chris Ophelia in 1996. This was the image that upset then New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani because it used a favorite material of the artist, elephant dung. Ew. Okay, that's a little weird. And it upset Giuliani so much that he tried to pull funding of the museum showing the artwork, which resulted in a court battle, a public argument about censorship, free speech, and the proper use of public money. I'm sure that Giuliani was motivated only by being offended, and it had nothing to do with the political posturing against then First Lady Hillary Clinton. Based on his description of the picture, where he said people were throwing dung at the Virgin Mary, it makes me wonder if he even saw Philly's original work. What really makes me wonder if Giuliani even looked at this artwork closely is that it's covered with pictures from porn magazines specifically of female genitalia. While these don't make the image better, they do make it more interesting. Back to the Rainbow Madonna of Częstochowa. When Giuliani talked about pulling the museum's funding, I wonder who he thought should, instead, be making those sorts of decisions about public funding for art. Should there be boards that decide these sorts of things? And who should make the rules? How do you get appointed to such a board? Also worth noting, a work called Immersion, or Piss Christ, by Andres Serrano, must be mentioned. Made in 1987, this is a crucifix suspended in a tank of the artist's own urine. This work caused an uproar, eventually causing the National Endowment for the Arts funding to be cut. There's another interesting parallel here. While Giuliani claimed people were flinging dung at the Virgin Mary, a Breitbart article about the Rainbow Mary was written in a way that it sounded like the rainbow was painted on the original image, not just a woman making posters. As an aside, I have to comment about Giuliani being exempt from being, lab being labeled an offended snowflake. Is it because this was before Twitter that this image didn't go viral? Or that he's not liberal that he gets a pass on being labeled a snowflake? With all this in mind, I now want to look briefly at this question. Is Islam actually off limits for criticism? Does Islam really get a pass for being a topic of debate? <laughs> God, oh, come on. I mean, everyone from Bill Maher to Trump to, I mean, this isn't really an argument. 
But let's take a look at the Muhammad cartoons controversy in 2005. Islam forbid showing images of the Prophet. But a Danish newspaper published 12 depictions of Muhammad, leading to a worldwide debate about religion and censorship. Acts of violence. Fat was being issued. South Park jumping on the bandwagon, because of course they did. And a drop in Danish exports to Middle Eastern countries. Yes, it was unacceptable for Muslims to react to Muhammad being shown by threatening or carrying out violence. Equally reprehensible was a Charlie Hebdo attack in 2015, when two gunmen stormed the satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo in Paris. Twelve were killed, eleven injured, because that paper occasionally mocked Islam along with other religions such as Catholicism and Judaism. I'm in agreement with Salman Rushdie on this. Islam should not be above criticism or reproach. However, I think this example is unusual and doesn't completely support this idea that we have to dance around Islamic extremism. For one, many papers did, in fact, publish their cartoons. And two, at least in Europe and the US, newspapers, newspaper companies made the decision to self-censor the cartoons before publication. Remember, they were motivated out of a fear of violence, not out of respect for Islam. And not that I agree with either of these decisions, but this wasn't just a simple case of government censorship. To me, this is a hugely complex subject involving the immigration of people from several different Middle Eastern countries to various places across Europe, the various ways that EU countries have had issues with letting Muslim immigrants become members of mainstream society, the assassination of Danish filmmaker Theo van Gogh for making a documentary about Muslim women, historical conflicts in the Middle East over oil leading to destabilization of that entire region, the fear that came after various terrorist attacks in capital cities across Europe, and the inability of most media to talk about Islam without conflating all Muslims with extremists. The idea that European countries were simply peacefully and happily minding their own business when a bunch of angry immigrants showed up and started breaking things is absurd. But it's not just a straw man. I've talked to some people in Europe who have this worldview, that neither the EU's foreign policy toward the Middle East, nor the discrimination Muslims face in some European countries are worth talking about. Nor do they think that these things are factors in the Mohammed cartoon controversy. I'd feel more comfortable if people from inside the culture were criticizing Islam. While I think that there's a lot to criticize about the most more extreme and conservative sides of Islam, I also think there are a lot of other ways to foster the values of tolerance in Muslim Europeans. Also, I still wonder about the ultimate intentions of the Danish cartoonists. Was the desire to show Muhammad motivated by a sincere desire to challenge Islam and its extremists? Or a desire to upset Muslims and be proven right about their beliefs? Maybe an exhibit of, of Muslim Danish artists examining Islamic traditions would be interesting and even offer a more nuanced perspective. People who grew up on a religion can sometimes offer a deeper, more reflective take, as they know more about the imagery and symbols of a religion than an outsider might. One could argue that I'm being too sensitive or focusing too much on current events, but it's impossible to view art meaningfully without some sort of cultural and historical background. It's what makes this painting of a black man riding a horse intriguing and socially relevant. It's how we know a picture of a god holding a thunderbolt is likely Zeus or Thor. It's how we know what's happening on this vase. Without prior knowledge, we just have a picture of bird women and a guy tied to a boat. Is this some sort of furry cosplay s and scene gone wrong? Is this a costume party? No, it's the Sirens and Odysseus. Having an understanding of history and culture is what allows us to really enjoy art and to make comments on it. This goes for all visual mediums, particularly memes. And why I don't think that talking about current images of Muhammad, but divorcing that discussion from current events, is at all useful. On the Imgur commenter's anger about my memes involving Mary, I wonder, is this different from wanting both Jesus and Muhammad to be equally criticized, or from the desire to be able to act on their anger about the ways Christianity is sometimes portrayed? It's also why I think that equating South Park's Jesus with the Danish cartoons of Muhammad isn't quite the same thing. The South Park creators are American, and so come from a society influenced by Christianity, where Islam is seen as an outside religion. Same thing with the Danish cartoonists. And for what it's worth, Piss Christ creator 
is Christian. But whenever people get upset about things like Kevin Smith's film Dogma, I wonder. I don't get what the exact argument is. Do people want to be able to riot when someone makes fun of Christianity? Arrest people who make images they don't like? Because at times, that's what it sounds like. Particularly in Poland. The ruling party often decries so-called Western liberal values and is particularly upset with Muslims and the LGBT community. As shown in this poster of the Pope criticizing the movie Clergy, a film which took a scathing look at pedophilia committed by Catholic priests. Tensha, a, ra a giant rainbow construction in Warsaw, was burned and vandalized multiple times before being taken down in 2015. Poland's ruling party is very outspoken of their dislike of gay rights. On a cultural note, I noticed this past November in 2018 that Polish public schools were holding All Saints Day balls as alternatives to Halloween, where the students dressed up as nuns, priests, popes, monks, or their favorite saints. In April of this year, a group of Polish priests made national news when they burned Harry Potter books, because those books contained magic. Part of me gets it. American pop culture is everywhere. McDonald's, pop music in malls, English taking over and possibly pushing out other languages. But it's also possible to be both pro so-called Western values and also anti-Americanization of culture. Unless we're talking about the fried cheese patty burger I had in Slovakia, this is an awesome blend of cultures. I don't know why this delicious pile of calories isn't marketed everywhere. And that's the point. It's okay to make a painting using cow dung and religious symbols. And it's also okay to get upset that someone made the painting in the first place. The problem comes in when you try and stop people from making paintings you don't like, be it Mohammed cartoons or pretentious art. Trying to stop museums from showing provocative art is a problem. Arresting people for making controversial posters is awful and an overstep of the government. And I think it's vital to remember context. The image in the beginning, white feathers and a black and white photo, looks pretty random. It's actually my version of a work titled Loot Square, shown in an exhibit called The Germans Did Not Come. The city I live in was German before World War II. During the final months of the war, as Soviet tanks rolled in, it was a location of a huge amount of violence, fighting, and destruction. When the war ended, the Germans were expelled from the city, and the city became part of Poland. The ruins in the photo are from my adopted city. German generals destroyed many homes to make a runway to escape by plane. This empty space became a spot for people to meet and sell black market goods and things they'd found in the rubble. For bags, they often used torn pillowcases and comforters and it was said that white downy feathers would blow around in the uncertain days after the war ended. So, the artwork. A large photo of this square with white feathers blown around by a fan while a sad song played. The song is from the movie Ravel and Piesch, which means the law and the fist. It, too, was about dealing with the aftermath of World War II. Which is why I'm sometimes so deeply saddened by what I see happening now in Poland's government. They should know the consequences of nationalism and censorship, having endured both World War II and communism. And I cannot make sense of why people have so quickly forgotten history. No one should threaten violence because someone else drew a picture of your god. Full stop. However, pretending that context is completely irrelevant is not true. Hiding your racism behind feigned outrage over censorship and free speech is bullshit. Thanks for watching, and special thanks to Slavik Borkowski and Pavel Dombowski for some help with translations. Again, my script, is, my script advisor is Brianna Stallings, and if you're interested in downloading some rainbow Madonnas of your own, including a bi-flag Madonna and a trans flag, uh, trans flag Madonna, I have listed a link to that in the video description.